making a Stuart model steam plant to part 85, refitting the steam taps to the turret and trying to make a PM Research steam whistle do what it is supposed to do. After fitting the turret to the steam valve on the top of the boiler, it was time to immediately remove it to fit the steam taps in the front of it. I didn't polish the turret. Instead, I used some fine wet or dry sandpaper to get a good finish on the metal, and then I used some Scotch-Brite to get the final finish. Here are the parts on my very messy workbench, ready to go back together. Nothing new here, I generally work in a very chaotic environment, but at least I know where everything is. As I showed in the last episode, some of the steam valve's thread inserts remained in the turret, and here's one of the thread inserts in my left hand. Two of the three thread inserts need to be refitted to the valves. During the removal process you can see that the threads were slightly damaged by the pair of pliers, but not very much. I'm going to refit the thread inserts, but I'm not going to use a pair of pliers. I'll show you how I do that in a moment. First of all, I'm applying some Loctite 542 thread sealant to the slightly marked area of the thread. This will be screwed into the valve. Now it's top tip time. When fitting thread inserts, the best way I find to do it is to use a union nut and a union cone. Screw the union nut with the cone onto one end of the thread, and then as you tighten the nut, the thread at the other end will screw into the tap, and the only contact point is the very end of the union cone, because there isn't a taper on the thread insert, and this makes it very easy to remove the union nut from the thread adapter without unscrewing it from the valve. This is a very simple solution to what could be a problem. All I have to do is take the pressure off the union cone by using a spanner on the nut, then I can unscrew the union nut entirely by hand. On the bench at the moment you can see various shim washers. And before applying the Loctite 542 as shown here, I screwed the valve into the turret to make sure that it was in the correct position. And that was about a quarter of a turn before the valve's final resting place. I did, however, have a problem with one of the valves. I couldn't get it to line up and end up in the right position. And here I'm reducing the thickness of the shim washer by using a piece of wet or dry sandpaper and rubbing the shim washer up and down on it. After a couple of attempts, another test fit showed this to be right. Here I'm applying some Loctite 542 to this thread, and then I fitted the shim washer and tightened the valve into its correct position using a spanner. And here are all three valves fitted to the turret. One steam valve for the S50, another steam valve for the 10V, and a spare one that can be used to supply steam to a third engine connected to the plant, or alternatively be used for connecting compressed air to the boiler. But a word of caution, if running the steam engines using compressed air being piped into the boiler, you must be aware that displacement lubricators do not work on compressed air, and the steam cylinders will need lubrication before running on compressed air. This can be done by removing the inlet pipe to the steam engine and pumping some oil in. But don't forget, this is not a continuous oil supply, so periodically you do need to remove the inlet pipe to the engine and put some more oil in the steam chest. A word of caution, make sure you do not introduce any oil into the boiler. Once I'd fitted the valves, I used a very stiff brush to clean up the turret and remove any excess Loctite 542. I don't know where I got this brush from, I found it somewhere in the workshop, but it's very good. It's not a wire brush, it just has very stiff bristles, and it's perfect for this job. And finally, I'm reconnecting the steam piping to the turret. One pipe delivers steam or compressed air to the Stuart S50 steam engine, and the other pipe delivers steam or compressed air to the Stuart 10V steam engine. I don't have much to say about this job, it's really simple just like a few of my early girlfriends. And the other thing is, you need to make sure that you do not over tighten the union nuts, because stripping the thread would not be a good idea. I will be making and fitting a right angled adapter on the third valve, to make it very easy to connect a third engine or an airline. Is it an improvement on the original? Yes it is, it's a bit stronger, although the original one really was strong enough, it just looked a bit frail. Some of the more eagle-eyed viewers out there will have noticed that I haven't refitted the steam whistle. Here is the threaded hole in the end of the turret, and this is where the steam whistle fits, 
using a right angled elbow so that the whistle and valve are in a vertical position. These PM Research steam whistles look quite good, but I have had a few of them, and some of them, like this one, don't whistle. Listen. The noise in the background is my dehumidifier that I always run in the workshop in winter. I've found that the usual problem with these PM Research whistles is that the bell, the part that rings and whistles, is not in the right place. Sometimes you can make these work by carefully bending the central shaft and moving the edges of the bell into alignment with the groove. But on this one, the gap around the edge where the steam blows out doesn't look to be in the centre. These whistles look quite scale, but really, they're a bit small. Here, just as an experiment, I'm seeing if I can persuade the centre part to move back into the middle. Eventually, by messing about and moving the position of the whistle's bell over the aperture, it did start to sort of whistle a bit. After a bit of further bending and tweaking, this really was as good as I could get it to blow. It did actually whistle much better at a lower pressure. But there's a very high, almost ultrasonic harmonic. This is a Willesco whistle, and it's miles better. Here's a comparison. I'm really not impressed with this whistle. I do have a second PM Research whistle in my stock of old whistles. I'll try that and see if it's any better. I'm going to fit it temporarily back onto the turret. I'm not using any Loctite 542 because it's going to be removed, but it's a good place to keep it so I don't lose it. When I look at the turret assembly now, I must admit it does look a lot better. And that's it for this episode. Stay safe, stay healthy, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainstream Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.